everybody. Welcome to season three of Christ with Coffee on Ice. I am your host, Ali Yost, and I am so grateful to be here with you guys. Happy Friday. Good morning, everyone. I am just like in such a peaceful, <laughs> I am in such a peaceful mindset. I just feel the presence of the Lord in this room right now, y'all. I cannot wait for this episode. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure where the Spirit is going to take us with this episode, but I do believe that it's going to be a really incredible start to this season. I'm so grateful that we're in season three right now. We have a bit of a rebrand. We've revamped the pod. As you guys have noticed, we are in a completely different filming space now for season three. So this is actually my living room, which I do love and adore. It's probably my favorite room in my house, aside from my filming room, honestly, because I have really loved that room and that space and my orange couch. But I don't know. It's it's funny because in current time of me filming this, my friends were just in town a couple days ago and we were recording a ton of content in here. If you guys are familiar with Karu, he has a podcast called The Secret Place. And so he was here and a bunch of us friends were just filming for his pod and also my podcast. And so we filmed it in here. And I was like, wait, I kind of love this space. Like, I just love the depth of filming in my living space. And I just, I didn't ever think to utilize it for the podcast, to be honest. I did kind of like the idea of having an entire room to just have all my equipment in. Because the one thing about filming in this space is I am like lugging my equipment in and out and in and out. Because I don't really want it to live in my living room. But I kind of love it. I kind of love it. So... It's giving rebrand, you know, the cover is different as you guys have noticed and now the environment that we're filming in is different, but the Holy Spirit is so alive and active in my living space specifically, like I do feel him everywhere in my home, but he is so present in this space and so I'm really excited to see where the Spirit leads us in this episode. I really want to talk about, honestly, I feel like we're probably going to talk about a few things, but at least the one thing that I want to start out with is the topic of comparison and just how nasty that is. I know that we all fall to fault to this spirit of comparison. It's just not a good spirit. (laughs) It doesn't make us feel good. Comparing ourselves to other people is a really dangerous slippery slope because it then leads to resentment, bitterness, discouragement, and envy, probably anger. So comparison really can be the one thing that leads you into all of these other spirits and feelings that are just not healthy for you. And it's not what God would want for you. God would never want his children to feel threatened or compare themselves to one another. Oh y'all, I got my coffee too, I forgot to tell you. We got our coffee, we got our Christ, and we got our coffee. But it's not on ice, y'all, it is hot coffee. (laughs) I'm just feeling the cozy vibes today. I really am. Little ASMR, okay, anyway. Um, But yeah, comparison is really nasty and it's not good for you. It's not good for your mental. And it's also, I do believe that it causes a lot of segregation, whether it's in the church, whether it's with other believers, whether it's with, you know, honestly, anybody, even people who are in the world, it causes a lot of separation, division between all of us. And that is the biggest goal of the enemy is to divide. He wants to divide. He wants to divide the church. He wants to divide people, households, homes, families, relationships. He wants to divide everybody. He doesn't want anyone to be unified. And so I feel like comparison is one of those things that he uses to divide us. And so when we find ourselves falling into comparison, it's probably also because we're a bit insecure. If we're going to be so for real and honest with ourselves, it could come from pride as well, but it definitely comes from insecurity where you feel like you don't have enough of something or maybe from the ego and pride perspective, it's like, well, why do these people have these things when I, when I deserve it? If not, I deserve more. Like I'm even more deserving of that. So why do they have it? Right? There's two sides of that spectrum of comparison that could be really ugly. And I have been guilty of all of it. I've been guilty of all of it. I've been guilty of comparing myself from a self-pity POV where I'm like, I've been working so hard and I do this, that, and the next. Like, why does this person have it and I don't? Like, comparing yourself to others where you feel like they don't deserve it, but you do. 
And then I've also been on the other side of the spectrum where I have compared myself in a way of self-loathing and not loving myself enough and feeling like I am not enough to deserve those things. And so it's just ugly. It's ugly on both sides of the spectrum. And I really want to just try to debunk that. And I think the biggest thing that we could do, especially as believers, is realizing when we do it and just having the self-awareness. Because the thing is, is that we're always going to be human and we're always going to fall short sometimes. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm perfect and I still don't compare myself to others. But I do believe that because of the Holy Spirit, I have a lot more self-awareness. It's discernment also. When I realize that it's actually being sent into my head from the enemy because he wants to put me down in that moment and he doesn't want me to feel good about myself or he does want me to cause myself to either isolate or take myself away from community maybe. I think that especially in the Christian community, there's a lot of comparison. If you are somebody like me where you have a podcast or if you're a leader of some sort or if you write books or if you make films, I don't know, even if you're just a creative in general, I think that it's very easy for creatives to compare themselves to others and vice versa. And so it's just, it's gross because the church is supposed to be unified. And so one of the biggest things that have been, it's been so beautiful for me to learn and see with being connected with other creatives and other people who are also in the Christian space that create like myself. I could give off so many examples. Obviously, we have Ashley Hetherington. She's my best friend. Ashley Jones, Karu Ellington. We have Ange and Ari from Girls Gone Bible. We have Emmy Moore from Saved Not Soft. We have Circuit Riders. I love everybody in Circuit Riders. Just so many creatives that are absolutely just like exploding in the Christian space. I literally love and adore these people so much and I love supporting them. And I think in the beginning of my journey, when I first started to get introduced to people in this community who are also doing similar things to myself, it was a bit intimidating. And maybe there was a bit of a hesitation because I was afraid of that comparison where I was like already comparing myself to them. And I was like, oh, I'm not on their level or I'm not good enough or this, that and the next. And that's what the enemy would want. Like he wants the church to be segregated and he wants us to be separated. And so it's been really fun to allow the Lord to bring these people into my life and maybe not have my guard up so much and not be so insecure and be like, no, let these people love you and also love them. Like, I just think that when you come from being in the world to then going into this space where people are truly like Christ loving, good genuine people who love the Lord, it is a bit of a culture shock. I'll be so for real. It is such a culture shock because from what I was used to, it was giving me the polar opposite to what Christians are and what they should be, which is loving, supportive. There's no, you know, spirit of, of bitterness, comparison, you know, and if you're experiencing that, those people are definitely being oppressed by, by um, these spirits and it's not healthy. It's not good. But I experienced so much of that in the world and I was also really guilty of it myself when I was in the world. So coming into the Christian space and experiencing something like this, it's actually so refreshing and it's freedom. It's like actually freedom. It's legit freedom. So no longer feeling like you have to compare yourself, no longer feeling paranoid that other people are judging you or comparing you to them or vice, like all of that like really just like catty gross energy just should not and does not exist when people truly love Jesus. And that has been so refreshing for me to step into, but it's also been so convicting. Like it really is convicting because I did have to really learn how to support and love on my brothers and sisters in the church with one, without feeling threatened, obviously, without feeling insecure, but then without feeling like their success would ever take away from mine. And when I say success, I really just mean blessings. Like God is infinite and he has more than enough blessings to give to all of us. And so supporting others and just encouraging others and loving on them and even celebrating them in their blessings and their successes is not going to take away from any of yours. And there could be things that people around you are receiving that could be a dream of yours. And you just, it also is a test of your faith. It really is. I think a lot of it also is a test of your faith in God, he might be testing you to see if you are capable of celebrating that person in that success and that milestone that they've achieved that is a dream of yours, but you have not yet achieved it. That is a test from God because if you can 
like wholeheartedly and genuinely support and love on that person and celebrate them without any spirit of bitterness or resentment, that is a past test from the Lord. And I think it really comes down to and is rooted in having faith in God, knowing that that is going to be for you as well, that that is coming for you, but it's a matter of God's timing and trusting him. It really is rooted in trust and faith in God and also begging him for humility. Like, Lord, I pray that I am so humble so that I can celebrate the people around me and I don't feel insecure and I don't feel like I have to compare myself to other people. So actually, while we're on this topic of comparing ourselves to others and seeing other people receiving blessings that maybe is a dream of ours that we're still waiting on, I want to bring up this one scripture from Romans. This is in Romans 9, 19. And this is the new international version that I'm reading. It reads, one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us for who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the some lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? So first off, guys, I love Romans. If you haven't tried to read Romans, I mean, I literally lit this whole book up. You can see <laughs> I like really highlighted most of it, but it's so good and there's just so much wisdom in it. And so I love that verse and I think it really does apply to what we're talking about because I think in a lot of ways too, maybe we could have certain dreams or wishes on our hearts that maybe we just weren't made for. I think that there is a difference between the desires that the, that the Lord has put on our hearts and maybe the desires that we have on our hearts that actually were never meant for us. Sometimes I feel like we could compare ourselves to others thinking, why wasn't I made this way? Like, why did, the, why did God make me this way and not make me like this person? So sometimes the desires that we have don't always align with the, de the desires of what God has for us in our life. And normally, guys, the desires that the Lord has for us in our life is actually better than the desires we have for ourselves because he knows who he made us to be from the very beginning. And so if we are constantly seeking out to be like someone else, when the Lord has so clearly made you to be you and he's made you to have this life and this purpose, you will never be like them because he's made you so perfectly the way that you are and so sometimes we try really really hard to be something that we're not because we so badly want to have this purpose or we see other people living these other things out and we're like well god why the heck can i be like that and it's like because you are made for such a specific purpose that is just as impactful and important so like the scripture is saying does not the potter have the right to make out of the some lump of clay, some pottery for special purposes and some for common use. So when you think of those two different purposes of pottery, obviously like the vintage china that maybe your mom brings out on Thanksgiving, like that pottery has a very specific use and it is only used once a year. It's special, it, it has a purpose, but it's, it's meant for that one special occasion and it's beautiful. It's beautiful, you know, but then there's pottery and there's dishes that could be used for common use every single day. So granted, are they as like pretty? Probably not. Are they used a bit more? Of course. But what a beautiful purpose even for common use, you know, like there's such a purpose in both. And no matter how much we want to be the China, if that's not what God has called us to be, and he's called us to be the common use, like the dishes and the pottery that people use every single day, that's beautiful. Like literally, we just need to honestly lean into whatever that purpose is that God has made us to be and not wish that we're supposed to be someone else. So don't question God's purpose for your life. For all forms of pottery serve a purpose, no matter if it's for a special purpose or common use. That's what I wrote in my Bible. I just love that, y'all. Like, we really just gotta have faith in the fact that God made us the way that we are for a purpose. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if you're like honestly still confused about what the Lord is using you for or what your purpose is. I think the best way 
to figure that out is to just be in the presence of God. Like he will speak to you and he will slowly start to show you. But I do believe that the purpose of all our lives at the end of the day, whether we are the fancy china or the common use pottery, we are supposed to be spreading the gospel. We are supposed to be living our lives out the way that Jesus lived his life, no matter what that looks like. Whether you're on a red carpet, whether you're on the big screen TVs, whether you're in movies, or whether you are literally working in the mundane at a restaurant as a server, like we are all meant to honor God and walk as Christ would walk every single day. And that can look like so many different things. And so I think the best thing that we can really, really do and the, the best way to avoid comparison is to go to our Father and let Him remind us who He's made us to be. And let Him pour that confidence into us. Because if it comes from a place of insecurity, if it comes from a place of feeling like you're not a big enough deal or you're not worthy enough or you know, you're like, well, what could God use me for? I think the best way to get that confidence, to to get that sense of purpose is by being in the presence of God and being in the secret place with him. You know, I've started a habit now where I, uh, I have this closet in my bedroom that I shut the door on and I haven't really used it for anything other than like a couple pieces of store. Like I need, I like put my, I'll put my luggage and like bedding in there, but I really don't have a lot of stuff to actually fill that space. And so I felt the Lord tell me that I needed to use it as like my secret place. So I shut the door and I have made it really sacred and special. I have a little speaker in there. So I'll add like some nice little music in the background. And I have a little lamp in there and I even have a heater because sometimes it gets cold, but I have this whole setup y'all. Okay. I'm sitting on my, I got a bunch of blankets in there and I just welcome the Holy Spirit. And when I tell you that it is actually transformed my quiet time with the Lord so much, my time with him is so much more intentional. I feel him so much deeper and I hear him clearer. And I also like when I'm reading the word, I'm a lot more focused because there's less distractions. I used to just read my word on my at my kitchen table in my in my kitchen, obviously. And granted, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, ain't, all right, he's everywhere all the time. But there's something about closing the door, like this is literal scripture, y'all, closing the door and being in the secret place with God and being in your quiet time with him. But y'all, that's where he's going to pour into you, whatever it is that you're lacking. If you feel like you are, you are having a hard time with comparing yourself to others, bring that to your dad, bring that to your father and talk to him about it and let him pour into you and say, God, I pray that I have, like, give me the confidence, like, let me feel at peace with the way that you've made me to be. And I think that I say reading scripture because like here it is, it speaks right to you. But reading scripture is so important, but also just being in the secret place with him and praying to him and letting him pour into you. Because as long as we are struggling with these things, we just can't rid it without him. Like he is the one that will constantly transform our hearts. He is the one that is going to constantly heal our hearts from all of these things, from bitterness, comparison, anger, jealousy, right? It's like, the only thing that can heal us from those things is Jesus. And so please prioritize your quiet time with him. Please like go shut the door and be with him and let him help you with these things. I really pray that obviously this podcast is something that inspires you and maybe brings some clarity, but ultimately the one that can do it is Jesus. Like this podcast episode isn't going to be a magic pill where suddenly we're all going to walk away from this and feel like we're never going to compare ourselves ever again to somebody. It's not a magic pill, but I really hope that it helps guide you guys to go to Jesus and ask for his help in repairing your heart that way because it's a really bitter feeling and it's not a good feeling. It's not good for you and it's also not good for your relationships. Like I do believe that I have some of the best relationships and friendships and the most pure, can I use that word? Like the most pure friendships because We've allowed the Holy Spirit to continue to work on us every day and not let us fall into that pit and into that trap and into that lie of comparison and competitiveness. Ooh, I want to say that word too, like competitiveness against people in the church. If somebody else is doing what you're doing and is ministering, or I'm just using this as an example because I'm living it, but this could even go into your workplace. Like if somebody has the same type of deal as you, right? They got the same job, the same passion, right? Whatever it is, it's the spirit of competitiveness that also is really toxic. And it's just not good. We shouldn't be competing with each other, bro. We're all on the same team. 
we're literally all on the same team. And I can also confidently say that there is nothing that I am saying right now that somebody else in the church hasn't already said. So there's nothing really original about what I'm doing right now. I'm just helping the word get further. And I'm hoping to obviously reach people that maybe other people who have talked about these things haven't reached yet. And so I think that's a really important way to look at our lives too, is that it's not about us, y'all. It's really not about us. And it's not even really about having originality. It's, it's just about doing what the Lord calls us to do, which is to love our neighbor as ourself. First, to love God and then our neighbors and to just spread the gospel, like spread Jesus's love. And as long as we're comparing ourselves, as long as we're competing with each other, as long as we are bitter, as long as we are resentful, that hinders the love that we get to share with Jesus, in Jesus, that hinders the peace <laughs> that we are able to live in every day, that hinders us from having pure and legitimately wholesome friendships with other people because there's just no way you can have a pure friendship or community in the church while also still having these feelings, you know? But this might be a little off topic, but I really love, I really love this scripture. This is 1 Corinthians 1, 26. And it reads, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chooses the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Actually, this can tie in a little bit because now I want to speak into anyone who feels like, okay, well, my purpose, you know, there's no way that the Lord could have a, like a great purpose for me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the way that you compare yourself to other people is because of insecurities and, um, you feel unworthy. I really love this because it's very clear, even through the story of who Jesus is and who he was and where he came from and how he was raised. I mean, the story of Jesus, that man was humble. Like he was born in a manger, like in a literal like barn, basically with hay and farm animals. It wasn't glorious. It wasn't bougie. He was the king of kings. He was the omega and the alpha, right? This man is the Messiah, savior of the world. And he was born into these circumstances. I don't know which scripture it is, but I believe it was one of the Pharisees that was doubting who Jesus was. And he had said, is there anything good that can actually come out of Nazareth? You know, like... There was also this cliche that there was nothing good that could come out of Nazareth. Like the people there were not giving quality or whatever that was to the world, right? These are the standards of the world. This is all man-made, you know? But even the story of Jesus like shows that, that God really has a thing. Like he loves proving the world wrong. He loves proving the world wrong. He loves proving people wrong. And he loves proving that he legitimately is sovereign. Like, he'd really be shutting up the world when he makes a miracle happen out of the places that, oh my gosh, this would never happen. Like, how could anything come good out of Nazareth? Or how could anyone, you know, I mean, even the disciples, even the people, even Paul, you know, who writes more than half of the New Testament, who wrote 1 Corinthians that we're reading from right now. I mean, from where he came from, it's like the Lord will literally make something so good out of something that to the world was not good. Like... Paul, with the way that he had treated Christians before following Christ, I mean, he literally, he was on the other side, y'all. He was legitimately assassinating and killing Christians. And then he was encountered by Christ, radically saved, and then so unbelievably bold for the kingdom. But people could have probably even judged him in his past and said, how in the world is this man now all of a sudden following, right? It's, it's always what the world says, but God loves to do what is impossible in the eyes of the world. And so if you are struggling with feeling like, well, how could God do anything with me? Or how could he possibly have anything great 
for my life or my story or my purpose. And I just want you to know that if you feel that way about yourself, you are like one of God's favorite things to work with. Because first and foremost, I do believe that everything you could be saying to yourself or if other people in the world are saying this about you, it is such a lie from the enemy. Like, please don't ever believe that. And I'm not saying that you are foolish. I'm saying like, that's what the world could be saying about you or even yourself. But the Lord looks at you differently. He doesn't see that when he looks at you. He sees something so beautiful. He sees a testimony. He sees something so powerful. And so the only thing that the Lord needs in something like that is he just needs your yes. He just needs your, okay, God, okay, fine. Do, I guess, do what you do. I'm willing, Lord. I'm willing to just follow you. And he will make such an incredible example out of you for the world to bite their tongue, like to just eat your dust. I don't know. Is that biblical? <laughs> Is that biblical of me to say? Okay, listen, that wasn't very nice. But that's what he loves to do. He will take for the foolishness of God is... Oh, wait, 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 where is it? Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. So no, maybe you didn't graduate college. Or no, maybe you weren't born into an extremely wealthy family and you weren't well off from the start of your life, you know, maybe you've endured struggles, maybe you've endured hardships that other people haven't, and in the eyes of the world, you look foolish, you look lower than, you know, and I just want y'all to truly, like, have the confidence in knowing that as long as you're walking with Jesus, he will shame the wise, he will shame the people who think that they know more, who think that they can tell you, sorry, you're not qualified, or sorry, you don't have this background, or sorry, you don't have a college degree, or sorry, you don't have the wisdom. Like, first of all, the ultimate wisdom of the world is right here in this book, and all of us have access to it. You don't need a college degree to be educated by our God, who is sovereign, who knows all, the one who knows what was, what is, and what will be. I mean, like, I wouldn't want to learn from anyone other than God. I just say that in hopes to just pour into someone and to encourage somebody that in the comparison or in the self-doubt or in the lack of confidence, like just know that the Lord sees you in a completely different light. He does. He, he loves you so much and he has such a radical and beautiful and important purpose for you. And if you don't know what that is yet, I find that hard to believe because we all have passions. You know, if you made a list about the things that you are passionate about and the things that you love, those are planted in your heart from the Lord. So if you have a passion for talking to people, if you have a passion for children, if you have a passion for connecting with people, if you have a passion for words, if you have a passion for writing, if you have a passion for teaching, like there are things that are on your heart that you do love. If you have a passion for creating art, like there are so many ways to bless people through those passions and the Lord has put those on your heart for a reason. And so if you don't know what to do with these things that you love, whether it's a skill or a talent or yeah, a passion, a love, ask God, he'll reveal it to you and he will use you and he will use you to shame the wise, you know? And the cool thing with doing this, like when God does this, is that there is no one to boast in other than him when he makes these miracles happen. Like I'm a literal walking miracle right now. I'm going to say that. Like if anyone, you guys know my testimony. I've talked about it on this podcast and on my socials. But I mean, if you look at the person that I was a year ago and the person that I am now, like there is no one I could boast about other than God. I'm sitting here, no, I don't read a lot of books other than the Bible. I try, I didn't finish college, I wasn't very good in school, you know, I, there are plenty of reasons why I shouldn't be where I am right now to the world, but the only reason and the only explanation and the only thing I can boast in right now is God. He's the only thing that has gotten me to where I am here today. Yes, it took my yes. It took my, okay, God, fine, let's do this. 
But other than that, y'all, when it comes to my confidence, when it comes to the peace that I have, when it comes to the way that I want to just pursue the Lord, I ask him for those things. I pray about it. I say, God, I pray that you give me the fire every day to pursue you. I pray that you give me the endurance to, to crave you and like literally just crave the word. Like everything that I am today is because of God, not me. So I can confidently say that I am a walking miracle and the only thing that could have done it was God. So it also just glorifies him and it excites and inspires other people who maybe also don't feel worthy or they do fall to comparing themselves to others or they do have bitterness or jealousy in their heart because they're like, well, why is this happening for this person and not me? Like it will also inspire other people to seek out God and say, all right, I want peace. I want answers. I want to know what, like, what am I going to be used for? God, show me and he'll show you. But it's like, it's giving underdog, you know, and God really thrives for an underdog moment. You know, like he, he'll bless anyone, but I really do believe, I believe that the Lord really thrives in, in making the underdog a hero through his name, you know? And there are people in the world that still won't get it. Like they won't accept it. They won't get it, you know? But the peace that the Lord gives you is so much greater than what the world could continue to say about you. And I do want to say that it does get easier the more time you spend with God and the more you get in his presence. It gets easier when it comes to even being criticized by the world and people telling you that you're not enough. It does get easier because God will just give you this peace that truly makes no sense. Like, I know we've said that a lot on this pod, y'all, but... He really does give a peace that makes no sense at all. And it'll just stop bothering you because you'll understand that the only thing, the only thing that you ever want to please, the only person that you would ever want to be proud of you is God. And the peace that you get in that is like, you're untouchable. Yeah, that's, that's just the lesson in all things though, y'all, is that the more you seek out the Lord, the more peace you get. The more you seek out quality time with him in the secret place the more peace you get the more confidence you get the less you you resent other people the less that you're angry the, the less that you compare yourself to other people the more you feel worthy you know the more that you feel capable but because of him like we really aren't worthy of his goodness but what makes us worthy is he who lives inside of us so maybe we're not worthy on our own but we are worthy with him living inside of us with Jesus. We're worthy with Jesus because he's worthy. And if he's living inside of you, you deserve to have that joy. You deserve to have those healthy relationships without comparing yourself to other people. You also deserve to be loved on by pure people who don't make you feel bad about yourself or don't put you down or make you feel like you have to be smaller than you are. That's another thing that we can all feel is that we're too big or we're too much for people, you know? So then you're comparing yourself to other people by being like, I need to be more chill like this person. I've been told my whole life, even up until now, that I'm too loud. But the Lord really has given me such a peace where he's like, hey, sister, I made you loud. I made you loud. I made you loud so that you could loudly and boldly share my love and share the truth of who, who I am, you know, and what the gospel is and how we're supposed to be living. So anyway, I hope that this episode gave you guys some peace and I hope it gave you some explanations. I'm glad that we could bring scripture into it, but y'all, you got to really read both Corinthians, honestly, Romans as well. Like, oh my gosh, just the New Testament is just amazing. It's so good. And I say that because I haven't really gotten into the Old Testament just yet in my journey. I am starting to read it a little bit now. Actually, I just read the whole book of Esther, which was really fun. But yeah, I still have yet to dive into the Old Testament. I do have some stuff highlighted. But there's just so much wisdom in this book, y'all. Please don't neglect it. Please don't, don't neglect the Bible. Don't neglect a single day. I know we're all guilty of it, but there is so much wisdom in this book. And God gives us so much peace in this book. There's so much peace, y'all. If you want peace, if you want to be freed from all of these things that we touched on today, but even other things, all of the things, anything that's robbing you of your peace, like this is it, this is it. This is what's given me peace. This is what's given me joy is the Bible. And so I just pray that y'all are reading it. I pray you are. And if you're not, 
please do it like every day because we need it every day. That's why it's alive. It's the living word, right? Like this is what's going to keep us our, like spiritually just healthy, you know? But I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that this was a good start to season three. I'm so grateful for y'all truly. I, I love you guys so much, but God really loves you more. Like he adores you guys and he wants, he wants a deep relationship with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He just, he wants to just be your companion and make life easier for you. Maybe that doesn't mean that he's taking away hardships, but he is comforting you through it and he's giving you that peace and he's giving you that reassurance. You know, hey, can we do something real cool today? Can we do something cool today? I want, if we all can do it, which I think we can, can we all show somebody why Jesus is so cool today? Can we show someone or multiple people why Jesus is so cool? Can you tell somebody about Jesus today boldly? Can you do that? Can we spread his love? Can we spread his light, his compassion? I want y'all to put a bumper sticker on your car that says Jesus loves you. <laughs> like, can we start being bold for Jesus? Because ultimately this is about also sharing this peace with other people that could be hurting and they don't know about this peace, you know? They don't know about the Savior who had died for all of us to give us this joy. So let us not be selfish with it. Let us not gatekeep Jesus and this peace that he gives us and the love that he gives us. Let's share it with the world because it's a good thing, y'all. It's called good news for a reason. And it's not a bad thing to talk about. I know that it's scary because we don't want to offend anyone, but I really am having a hard time understanding how it could be offensive to share peace and love and joy with people, you know? Even if it's in a subtle way where you're just blessing them by giving them a coffee or buying a coffee for somebody and telling them that Jesus loves them, you know? But anyway, let's do that. Let's do that today, but also for the rest of this week until I see you guys next week. But happy Friday, y'all. I hope you have a blessed weekend and I will see you next time. Bye. If you guys can't wait until next Friday for another episode, you are in luck. Subscribe to our Patreon where you will have early access to future episodes and occasional surprise bonus episodes. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok for more content. And if this episode spoke to you, please write us a five-star review since it helps the podcast so much. We'll see you guys next time.